Okay, so here I've got us zoomed in on um, the eyepiece. So looking down in our sample on the left here, that is our sample salicylic acid, acid all, all packed in. Over here on the right is the um, sucrose. Now, um, unfortunately, my macro mode is not actually focusing on this all that well, obviously. But um, I'm hoping that as I crank up this heat, we'll see them uh, melt. Now, I do know approximately the melting point. Um, the salicylic acid is supposed to melt right around 150. So my um, melt station, I'm going to, since I use the one that has the little uh, temperature gauge on it, I am going to actually tell it to warm up to uh, right around 150. But I am watching the um, thermometer or the uh, temperature probe reading. Um, right now it's at 23.8. I couldn't actually set this up so we could see them both. So we're going to do this and um, you'll take my word on it. All right. But um, this is going to take a bit. So I'm just going to pause this uh, until it gets about up to about 140. Okay. So I started recording again. We got it up to about 130, and it's slowly going higher. Um, I, I haven't adjusted my nozzle, nozzle yet, but I do want to give a, 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 the rotation here. And all I'm doing is grabbing it at the top of the um, uh, capillaries themselves, trying not to touch any of the metal. Um, the outer case is typically fine to touch, but anything inside there is sitting about 132 degrees. I bet that hurt a lot. But um, all I'm seeing is that um, it's still very much a solid in there. Now, you are seeing the crystals in the, in the um, sucrose. That's what that glitter is. But we were seeing that before. So there, there is no change as of right now. But we're just now right on the edge of where we might start to see a melting point for the salicylic acid. Because while it does have a melting point of 158, I don't think we're going to get a good or a nice narrow range that's mainly because of the um, moisture issues with all the chemicals right now due to the leak that was in the roof um, so I'm taking it slow and I'm actually mostly looking at the one on the left and unfortunately I'm having to do this by looking at the same image you're seeing because I actually can't see uh, the actual lens that's through the lens itself because my camera's in the way. So what I'm looking for is the salicylic acid on the left. I'm, as I'm rotating it, I'm looking for signs of uh, more shininess because that's a good indication that stuff is starting to melt. I'm not seeing a big change. Okay, our temperatures right at one hundred and thirty nine. Still about 20 degrees lower than any melting point we're expecting to have. You'll notice when you're in the lab, this is much easier to see because uh, even though I'm zoomed in pretty well, my, my camera's not focused well at all.
right, we're hitting 145. Definitely going slow enough that we should get good readings. Right at 150. Okay, you can start to see some movement that's other than me. So we have definitely started to gloss up a little, and that's right around 154.5. And let's see, will it totally disappear by 158 or totally go liquid? not noticing the glimmer nearly as much and that's because it's starting to fill up with liquid and there it goes you notice how it kind of looks like a piece of ice down in there Oh, looking around the camera down in the top so without the lens it looks a lot more like an ice cube floating in water but there it's definitely in the liquid state and that finished right at 161.2 so slightly higher range than we'd expect and higher melting point than we'd expect but not terribly surprising with the uh, I know it's got some moisture issues right now um, I think everything in the stock room has some moisture issues. All right, now on the right is our sucrose, and we should see it actually turn into something totally different because it turns out sucrose doesn't actually melt. When it gets up to around 100 and, um, excuse me, around 180, it will decompose. And... I actually managed to get a little bit more of the solid in there than I actually wanted. I couldn't pack it tight enough. 
but we do see the top of it, and that was kind of what I was hoping to do, is just so we could see the top of it, because what this should do is, as it actually starts to decompose, we should actually see what almost looks like air pockets forming in there. And it's not really air pockets, it's just where the decomposition is um, making some gases along with the other product it's going to make. And I know from past experience, if we do this really super fast, we can actually get it to turn black, but you're technically caramelizing the sugar. Oh. I should adjust my heating temperature because it stopped heating right about where it's supposed to. It, it, it got up to about 170 and then stopped. Yeah. So I set my knob very high. I'm not going to try to get a range on this one so I don't care um, where it where, what number I get, to, get off of it. This really is so we can see a decomposition. Now, it should decompose here just in about another 5, 10 degrees, and it's warming up pretty fast, so I'm going to stop spinning it because this one already had a little bit of a sparkle to it. Get it so we can see some more of those. And without spinning it, we should start to see that ever so slightly changing, as in those sparkles are going to, um, well, the, the texture will change. All right, so we're right now at 176, and we are expecting the decomposition within 10 degrees, and I do have it heating up faster, so it should happen relatively quick by comparison. Oh, lights just turned off in the lab. I should have done that earlier. Messed up the focus, though. <laughs> Come on, lights. Come back on here. Okay. Back on. And we are right at the temperature where so decomposition should be occurring. Let me try to get an angle where we get some more luster. Yeah, there we go. See that change? Definitely not looking like it's turning into a liquid per se. That's basically because it, it, it's not. I mean, there is liquid and gas in there. And technically right there in the middle, we have an air pocket that formed. Let's see if we can see it a little bit better. Yeah. That's the gases that were in there from the decomposition. So technically, that's a chemical change. So it's no longer um, sucrose. And that happened right around uh, 189, which is about where we predict it to be. All right. Um, and that's our melting point. Now, technically, now that we're all done, um, this particular melting point apparatus has a little fan mode on it so it can cool back down. And um, then you uh, can do another run. Otherwise, you have to let it cool manually. Um, and the capillaries themselves, we don't try to do anything and salvage those samples, so they will just go into the broken glass. And cleanup just involves putting your, stu your, your uh, toys away. All right. Thank you.